Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to cover chapter five of the Salvador's book Structure in Architecture. So chapter five is dedicated to the basic states of stress. So in, uh, uh, there are a few sub chapters here. So one is simple tension, simple compression, simple shear and simple bending. And we are going to take a look at each of those. So tension. Tension is the state of stress in which the molecular structure of the material tends to be pulled apart. The steel cables lifting or lowering an elevator have their particles pulled apart by the, the, the weight of the elevator. So under the pull of the weight, the cables become longer. So lengthening is the typical um, of tension. Uh, the elongation of a unit length of cable is called its tensile strain. So always uh, try to actually imagine that. That is be uh, better to have a picture uh, in front of your eyes when you try to understand the concept. So uh, when placed under a tension load, a structural element such as a hanger rod will lengthen or deform. The amount of deformation is proportional to the material's elastic modulus or modulus of elasticity. The ratio of the amount of deformation relative to the original length is deferred to as the tensile strain. So um, the, um, for a given strain, the lengthening of the cable is proportional to the length of the cable. So if the cable elongates by a quarter inch, when the elevator is at the top floor of an eight-story building, the cable will elongate eight times that much or two inches when the elevator is on the, uh, at the ground floor. So, uh, and uh, please remember that certain materials such as concrete may be easily torn apart by tension with little elongation. Others, such as steel, are capable of substantial tensile elongation and are very strong in tension. So that's why the reinforced concrete is a very good combination of both. So uh, please refer back to the textbook. There are nice graphics here, and I would like you to uh, see them. I would like you to remember them and maybe save them in your library for, for uh, future reference. So uh, we know that tensile stress is the most basic type of stress. The entire cross section of the material is, is uh, acted on the same magnitude across the member. So uh, using modern ultra high tech materials such as carbon nanotubes, which have the highest tensile stress of any known material today, it is actually theorized that one day it may be possible to build a space elevator by suspending a cable made from carbon nanotubes from an orbiting platform in space. Uh, but that's just the theory, so uh, it has not been developed yet. Um, uh, so the elongation is the most important, but not the only, deformation accompanying simple tension. Careful measurements of the cable before and after the application of the load show that uh, as the load increases and the cable elongates, its diameter decreases. This lateral change in dimension was first discovered by French um, Psychicist uh, uh, Poisson at the beginning of the 19th century. And the ratio of the lateral to the longitudinal strain is called Poisson's ratio. So it's about 0.3 for steel. So when we talk about the simple compression, it is the state of stress in which the particles of the material are pushed one against the other. So a column supporting a weight is under compression. It shortens under load. And shortening is typical of compression. And in the elastic range, the shortening of a unit length or of column or 
its compressive strain is proportional to the load per unit of column area. So um, the ratio of compressive stress to compressive strain in the is the um, elastic modulus in compression. So again, a few images that I would like you to be familiar with. So please go back to the textbook. Uh, structural elements developing simple compression are very common because eventually all loads must be channeled down to earth. They appear equally in modern steel buildings as well as Greek stone temples. So let's talk a little bit about buckling. So um, I don't know if you remember or not, but um, Charlie Chaplin um, was often seen leaning on a cane made of a slim bamboo rod. So, and whenever he uh, leans heavily on the cane, the cane bends outward. So that is actually called buckling out or buckling. And uh, when it, the pressure is too much, the, um, the cane or the column or whatever member it is, it breaks. So the buckling phenomenon may be uh, usefully visualized from another viewpoint. A slender column shortens when compressed by a weight applied to its top and in so doing lowers the weight's position. So the tendency of all weights to lower their position in the basic law of nature. It is another basic law of nature that whenever there is a choice between different paths, a physical phenomenon will follow the easiest path. And we can see it with the water uh, when it follows the, the, the topographic pattern and other things in nature. So uh, it must be realized that theoretically the column will bend out even if the load is perfectly centered and the material of the column is perfectly homogeneous. In practice, small imperfections in the centering of the load and flows in the material will facilitate buckling. So the stiffness of a column and therefore its buckling load depends on its material, length, and shape of its cross section and the restraints applied to its ends as well as possible bracing along its weight. To be strong against buckling and still be efficient, compression members must not be slender and yet must have a small area so as to use a limited amount of material. So that is just the dilemma that everybody has to solve when planning the uh, structural loads and the use of materials. So the buckling load increases with the restraints at the end of the compressed member. A cantilevered column buckles at the upper half of a column twice as long and free to rotate at both supported ends. Hence, its buckling load is one fourth of what for the same simply supported column. So again, please refer to the images. There are different buckling uh, loads versus uh, versus length and different shapes and how the column responds. So, um, and we are moving to the simple shear. So shear is the state of stress in which the particles of the material slide relative to each other. Bolts in bolted connection tend to shear. A hole puncher uses shear to punch out holes in a sheet of paper since the lever arm of the shear is very small. The weight of a short cantilever beam built into a wall tends to shear off the beam from the wall at its support. So, uh, and um, a lot of images here, you can see the shear in bolts. You can see the punch and shear. You can see the shear strain at, uh, in cantilevered beam. And you can see a shear stress here. So uh, with the arrows, you can see where actually they all move to. So please refer to the uh, textbook because it's important to understand how actually um, vertical shear uh, and other shears move. So um, 
the balance of equal and opposite forces is so prevalent in structures that is given a special name. A pair of equal forces acting in um, exactly opposite directions and separated by a distance is referred to as moment couple or more commonly known just as a couple. A couple is a linear equilibrium but will generate rotation, which can only be balanced by an equal and opposite moment couple, precisely the balance we see in looking at the phenomenon of shear. So um, a study reveals that any pair of shear forces on the elemental block can be looked at as one resultant force, either acting in compression or tension on the block. So the uh, tensile and compressive diagonal forces result by combining the horizontal and vertical shears first along the lengthened and then along the shortened diagonals. Uh, and we are moving to torsion. So the tendency to slide char characteristic of shear is also found in structural elements twisted by applied loads. Consider a bar of circular cross section on the surface of which is uh, graphed a square mesh of straight lines. If this bar is twisted so that one end section rotates in relation to the other, as one might twist a screwdriver, the squares on its surface become skewed rectangles. Since this kind of deformation can only be due to shear stress, twisting, um, must produce shear strains and hence shear stresses in the cross section of the bar and for equilibrium, also in the radial planes perpendicular to the cross section. This state of stress resulting from the twist along uh, one axis, although consistent of pure shear is called torsion. So uh, there is the graphical representation here. Please refer to the textbook. You can see how that actually works, uh, that shear in torsion, uh, uh, and you will remember that. So uh, torsion occurs in a structural element whenever the loads tend to twist it. For example, the eccentric loads transferred by a floor beam to a spandrel beam induce torsional stresses in the spandrel. So, and again, you can see how it is located here. You can see the, the graphical representation here, uh, the spandrel beam under torsion. And also um, there is a torsion on, um, on the girder. So you can see that too. So, we are moving to the last section of chapter five, and that's simple bending. So simultaneous compression and tension in different positions of the same structural element is perhaps the most common of these combinations. And it's called bending and plays an essential role in most structural systems. So um, when you... Uh, can, if you can imagine a plank supported by stones at each end, uh, and then uh, two children of equal weight stand on uh, stand at equal distances from the end of the plank, then the plank bends downward, and the curve assumed by the plank between the stones can be shown um, to be an arc of a circle. So by drawing evenly spaced vertical lines on the side of a flexible foam beam, it can be observed that upon bending, these lines open up at the bottom and crowd at the top. Uh, and please refer to the picture, how that actually works and um, uh, how it's depicted in this section. So in view of compressive strength of most structural materials, it's relatively easy to channel loads vertically down to earth. The fundamental structural problem consists instead of transferring vertical loads horizontally in order to span the distance between vertical supports. 
Bending is thus seen to be the prime importance of a structural mechanism. So, uh, and you can see the strains in bending. There are a few graphics here. You can see load channeling. So that is important to understand. Please refer to uh, the book and you can see the reinforced concrete beam, how that actually acts. Uh, and you can see what actually happens to concrete and the steel. So, and this wraps up our uh, chapter five. So uh, the next chapter is, uh, that starts um, uh, structural forms. That's part two of the textbook. And that is going to be uh, about tension and compression structures. And that was it for chapter five. Thank you so much. I will see you in chapter six.